KTAL Patriots, how the heck are you? This is Mr. Slagle reporting from the Mathnasium, aka Room 142 of North Pole High School. Today we're going to be going over our second method for solving systems of equations in Algebra 1. This is the second of three methods that you will be learning, and it is called solving by substitution. Substitution. Uh, as we've mentioned before, means replacement, just like we replace the natural sunlight which we receive with vitamin D supplements during the winter, which we are headed into. So get your vitamin D ready. Um, yeah, so uh, substitution. We've been doing substitution for a while. All right. Whenever time I asked, hey, What's the value of y? Or let's plot a point on a graph. Um, we are substituting. We are replacing. We'd say y equals 6x plus 19. What is y? What is the value of y when x is 3? Believe it or not, this is a system of equations. Okay, And the system of equations looks like this. So what is the value of y when x is 3? So let's go ahead and plug in here. So we would say y equals 6 times, and this is where we substitute, we replace x with the value we know it's equal to, if it's 3, plus 19, y equals 18 plus 19, which is 27. All right, point I'm trying to make here is we've been doing substitution the entire time. Um, but now we're going to be substituting things that are a little bit bigger and take a little bit more work to get our answer. So let's go hard. Let's go ahead and see our first system of equations. So remember last time, um, a system of equations, we had like two uh, equations uh, on our coordinate plane. And we want to know that the solution is where those two lines cross, right? So. Um, and three, you know, two lines can interact in multiple ways. So there is the case where, you know, you know, if two lines have different slopes, they're going to cross at a single point, and there will be one solution. If two lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts, there will be no solution. If two y lines have the same slope and the same y-intercept, there will be infinite solutions. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be solving um, a system of equations, except we are not going to be using graphing. We can use graphing to check our answers, but basically what we're going to be doing is just doing it algebraically and uh, getting our answer on paper by solving some equations and whatnot. So here we go. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we've got y equals 4x minus 5 and y equals negative 2x plus 7. So we could graph these easy enough and see where the two lines cross and that would be our solution. But let's do it on paper. Let's do it using um, some algebra here. And that's going to make this, I think, pretty darn exciting. So what I'm going to do, I know that y is equal to 4x minus 5. I also know that y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. So that means that since y is equal to this and y is equal to that, these two things must be equal to each other, right? That's the transitive property. But you can also take this and substitute it in for y here. Solving a system of equations by substitution is like taking the two equations and finding a way to weave them and mesh them together. So we take y equal to 4x minus 5 from the first equation, and we insert it into the second equation. The two equations must be tied together. And I'm going to do this with colors. I'm going to start to kind of go fast here so we can keep the video pretty short. But basically, I'm going to replace y with empty parentheses. Here's the blue equation, and what we're doing is we are replacing y with what we know it's equal to in the red equation, 4x minus 5. All right. And so now we can just solve. Um, we can solve. We want to get our x terms together. I'm going to add 2x. Now we have an equation that's only got one variable, so we're able to solve and get an answer. OK, so that's 6x minus 5 is equal to 7. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. You'll get 6x equals 12. Divide by 6 on both sides and get x equals 2. So what does this number mean? 
Remember, we were looking for where these two lines cross. This means these lines intersect at x equals 2. These lines cross at x equals 2. So that means somewhere on the graph, if this is x equals 2, somewhere along here they cross. We don't know where that is yet. So to find out, all you have to do is take the first point that you got and substitute or put that, plug that in for x in one of the two equations. Now if this is a solution to the system of equations, it should be that um, we'll get the same answer no matter which equation we plug into because the solution is a point that's in common between both lines. So we should get the same answer either way. So it doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick the blue one just for just because because I randomly said so. So y is equal to negative 2 times 2. We're plugging this into the blue equation plus 7. That's y equals negative 4 plus 7, which is y equals 3. All right, so what does this mean? The lines intersect at x equals 2, and they also intersect at y equals 3. That means our lines intersect at 2 comma 3. So now let's take a look. Vanna, would you reveal the letters from today? The lines. Vanna? Vanna? Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. We got a little laggy there. That's OK. <sighs> Vanna's moving a little slow. She had a hot, hot pocket for dinner. All right, so here's our, here's our point, 2 comma 3. There's our solution. I'm going to convince you that these are our two lines. Our y-intercept of negative 5, slope of up 4 over 1. There's our red line, blue line, y-intercept of 7, slope of negative 2. And that's where they cross, cross 2 comma 3. Now, we did this without looking at the graphs, and then I magically had the, the graphs revealed to confirm our answer. So this is a way to convince yourself that you're correct. Fun, fun, fun. Let's do another one. All right, we got a little bit of an issue here. The issue is that the last one, we, we had it said, it said y equals. So I was able to insert it into the other equation, into the blue equation. Here, it doesn't say y equals. It just says, um, it just says 2x plus y. So what do we have to do? The first step is to get one of the two equations to say y equals or x equals. Turns out x is going to be a little more challenging here. We're going to end up with some fractions. So let's just solve for y. Um, yeah, and I think the red equation is the simplest because y is already positive. This is a one-step equation to get y by itself. So I'm going to come down here and recopy the equation. 2x plus y equals 3. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides to get y equals negative 2x plus 3. So we've, we've got this in slope-intercept form. That's great. Don't really care. Uh, you know, I just need it to say y equals, so then I can rewrite this equation and substitute for y. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is kind of like super helpful for us inserting and weaving the two equations together. I've solved for one of my variables. variables. Now on the next one, negative 3x minus... I'm going to use parentheses. Instead of writing y, I'm going to write what y is equal to. And I'm going to insert negative 2x plus 3, replacing y, substituting for y. Lots of vocabulary words here. So this is negative 3x. And we're, going to we're going to distribute the minus sign here, which is really kind of like distributing a negative 1 to each of the terms. So we'll get plus 2x minus 3 equals negative 5. Super. Now we have two like terms we can combine. That's going to be negative x minus 3 equals negative 5. We'll add 3 to both sides to get negative x equals negative 2. And multiply each side by, or rather divide each side by negative 1 to get our final answer of x equals 2. Oh, hey, what the heck? These also cross at the x value, too. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, now we need to find the y value at which they cross. So plug it into one of the two equations at the top to figure it out. You could also use um, this one right here that we've rewritten. 
But if you made a mistake from here to here, you'd be, uh, I guess, in trouble, but whatever. So let's go ahead and plug into one of the original equations. So we go up. That's going to be 2 times 2 plus y equals 3. 4 plus y equals 3. That's y. So minus 4, minus 4, y equals negative 1. So these points cross at 2, negative 1. Look at that. 2, negative 1. There's our, now if I were to have put this in slope intercept form, or oh I did. So go up at 3, it's got a slope at negative 2. Where do they cross? Bingo. Right here. Okay. And then in blue, um, let's see. Uh, we would add 5, that'd be negative 3x plus 5, so down 3x. So here's our solution, as predicted, 2, negative 1. All right, so let's recap what we've done so far. The steps for solving a system of equations by substitution. First, you want to isolate one of the variables. So that's what we did right here. So this is step one complete. On the first problem, um, we were it was already complete when we were given the problem. So we were given with the variable isolated to us. Because it said y equals, or it could say x equals, right? Here we had to solve. So step one took some time. Step two is use that variable to substitute into the other equation. We did step two immediately after we completed step one. Step two right here. Okay, fantastic. Um, and then the last one is use algebra skills. So basically you're using algebra skills to solve for each of the algebra skills. You solve for one variable and then plug that into either equation to solve for the next. That's the basic step uh, step there. But this is, this is the tough part for a lot of people, is, is getting to this point correctly. All right, let's see a couple more. Um, let's take a look at this example. Uh, for, for this one, we don't have an x, we don't have a y. What's the strategy for solving these? We really have four options. Step one is isolate one of the variables. So we could isolate, um, we could isolate C. I'm just coloring the, uh, the equations here. We could isolate C in the top equation. We could isolate C in the bottom equation. We could isolate D in the top equation. Or we could isolate D in the bottom equation. So let's say we choose C. I'm going to show you why C is probably not the best idea. If you do 8c minus 2d equals 6, and you want to isolate for c, which means we want to get it to say c equals, we would add 2d to both sides to get 2d plus 6, and divide by 8. You end up with, don't write this down, you'd end up with c equals 1 fourth d plus 3 over 4. Now this is possible. It is possible for us to substitute this in, this is the bottom equation, so we could take this and put it into the top equation, and we'd end up with this awful thing that looked like 9 times 1 fourth. We'd end up with some really messy fractions. Is it possible? Yes. Is it the best use of our time? No. So we're not going to do that. We're going to solve for something much easier. So as you can tell, if, it, if you look here and you can see, oh, like, well, I'm going to end up doing 3 divided by 9 here, so if I'm solving for C, not good. Ah, oh, but if we solve for D in the top or bottom equation, that looks a little more promising. So I'm going to grab my red equation. I'm going to bring that over this way. So that's going to be 9c plus 3d equals 12. We subtract 9c from each side. We're trying to isolate d. We get 3d equals negative 9c plus 12. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. I'm going to change colors because my eyes like to see a different color when I do that for some reason. So you can see the red working its way down. Divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1d. Um, negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3c plus 4. OK. Um, so now the blue equation, we have isolated for d. So now I'm going to go into the blue equation. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can maybe finish from here or see where you can go. So I'm going to take D and plug that into the blue equation. So it's going to be 8C minus 2, and then in parentheses equals 6. Grab my red marker, negative 3C plus 4. So that's 8C 
plus 6c minus 8 after we distribute times negative 2 times negative 3 positive 6 negative 2 times 4 minus 8 equals 6 let's combine ter like terms so we'll get 14c minus 8 equals 6 um, add 8 to both sides 14c equals 14 so c equals 1 fantastic c equals 1 great so now I'm going to plug that into one of the equations I'll just go back into the top or the bottom doesn't really matter. What the heck? Let's do the bottom equation. Did the top one all day today. So it'll be 8 times 1 minus 2d equals 6. So that's 8 minus 2d equals 6. Um, subtract 8 from both sides. Negative 2d equals negative 2. d equals 1. Now we don't have to write this as a point because we're not saying which one is x and which one's y necessarily as long as you've solved for each you're good. I do want you to write it in a point um, if it's written as x and y, but your assignment will be in my open math, so it's not a big deal. Okay, uh, and I skipped this one in class, but I'm going to do it right now. Um, so this is already isolated for x, the top equation, so we kind of have to be kind of careful. It's already isolated for x, so when I go to substitute here at the bottom, you'll notice there isn't an x. So that's a sign that you really need to start with the bottom equation. So let's start with this bottom equation. And the first thing that we're going to do here, boy, I really like uh, using colors. So we'll call this our blue equation. Okay, I, I'm going to solve the blue equation first, which means I want to get these y's together. I'm going to subtract 4y from each side, and we'll get negative 3y is equal to 6, and y equals 2. Well, now we're in good shape. Now we're in good shape. Because now I can come up to the red equation. I can rewrite the red equation as um, x equals 5 times 2 minus 9. That's supposed to be negative 2, excuse me. I'm going to make that negative there. Negative 2. So this is negative 2. So it'll be x equals negative 10 minus 9, which is x equals negative 19. So our solution, x goes in the x slot, y goes in the y slot is negative 19 comma negative 2. Once you get the hang of these, they can go pretty quick. All right, now I'm going to show you the graph of this one first. This is why substitution <coughs> is superior to graphing, if you're trying to be perfectly accurate. Now, you look where these two lines cross, and you can put a point, and you can guess, and you can surmise, and you can estimate, but you're not going to get, you know, overall, it's not clear you're going to get the exact answer. So there are times, the reason substitution is beneficial and it's really superior um, is that it gives you an exact answer. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do similar to what we did on the first problem. I'm going to take the top equation. Actually, let's do it in reverse. I'm going to take the bottom equation, it doesn't really matter, and substitute it into the top equation. We know that y equals 8x minus 3. Um, so it's going to be y equals 8x minus 3, but y also equals negative 7x plus 7. So that means that negative 7x plus 7 must be equal to 8x minus 3. <clears throat> All right, so now we can solve. I'll uh, add 7x to both sides. Let's keep our x coefficient positive. It'll be 7 equals... 15x minus 3, add 3 to both sides, 10 equals 15x, divide both sides by 10, or sorry, by 15, to get x equals 10 over 15, which simplifies to 2 over 3. And when we look at, um, when we look at this graph, the heck a black pen back when we look at this graph that is completely reasonable here's my two lines got a y-intercept of negative three got a slope of eight got a y-intercept of positive seven got a slope of negative seven okay it's perfectly reasonable that our x value is two-thirds there that's amazing but now we know for sure we're not guessing we're not estimating we know exactly what it is 
So now we've got to take two thirds, we've got to plug it back into one of the equations. I'm going to plug it into the top one. That's so going to be y equals 8 times 2 thirds minus 3. There are many, many ways that you can do the fractions here. I'm going to use mixed numbers. I think that's the easiest. This will be, sorry, skipping steps. This will be 8 over 1 times 2 over 3 minus 3, which is y equals 16 over 3 minus 3. Let's write that as a mixed number so we can subtract, because I know 16 over 3 <coughs> is going to be bigger than the 3 that we're subtracting. So this makes sense. So that is y equals 16 over 3. Well, 15 over 3 is 5, so it's 5 plus 1 additional third. Minus 3 gives me our y value of 2 and a third. So what's our solution? Our solution at this point right here is 2 thirds comma 2 and a third, and that seems to agree with our graph. Pretty exciting. What's the benefit of substitution? gives us exact answers and we don't have to guess. Okay, it is possible that you will come to, um, it, it is possible that you'll come to one that looks like this. So um, if you're small, smart here, you'll, you would maybe, hey, that's really one step away from slope intercept form. If I get it in a slope intercept form, I can see if it has a different slope um, or the same slope so we can determine quickly whether, how many solutions we're gonna have. But if you're like me, you would probably be like, ooh, I'll, I'll do, this one's already solved. I'll, uh, I'll plug it into the top equation. So if you do that, you get negative 2 times 2x plus 4 equals negative 4x plus 2. Distributing the negative 2, you get negative 4x minus 8 equals negative 4x plus 2. Add 4x to both sides. Those uh, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so you get negative, uh, negative 8 equals 2. And this is not true, okay? This is impossible, right? Not true, this is a false statement. Since we got a false statement, that's not our answer. I don't know why I boxed that. This is not your answer, and false statement is not your answer. Your answer is, there is no solution. These lines are parallel. They're parallel and they have different y-intercepts, right? So they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. Um, and if we look at our, take a look at our graph here, here are two lines. Um, if I divide by negative 2, this will be positive 2. This will be negative 1. So they're y-intercept of negative 1, slope of 2. This one's got a y-intercept of 4, slope of 2. These lines will never cross. Um, so that means mathematically what we see is we'll get a false statement. We're looking for where they cross, and they don't cross. So not possible. No solution. No intersection. Okay. Uh, this one is similar. Um, it is possible. Um, if you plug in, you know, they could be the same line disguised in a different form. So if that's the case. Oh, I do, I do need to know that um, when you're entering, you guys need to know when you're entering here on um, My Open Math, if you're doing your assignment on My Open Math, um, what's the x coordinate of where they intersect? The x coordinate does not exist. What's the y coordinate of where they intersect? The y coordinate does not exist. So this is what you write on My Open Math if you're doing it on there. 6x minus 4y, but instead of writing y, I'm going to write negative 3 halves x plus 2. Now, all you would have to do is put this into slope-intercept form to see that they're the same, but I'm doing it the hard way. Plus 8. I rewrote the blue equation. I substituted the red equation in for y because it's already isolated. Negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 3 is 12. Divided by 2 is positive 6. Um, and then that's going to be, excuse me, negative 4 times positive 2 is minus 8. Plus 8 gives us, that goes to 0. Negative 6x equals negative 6x. Minus 6 to get the terms together, and you get 0 equals 0. This is a true statement. I've drawn a tape, a cassette tape, successfully. Okay, if it's a true statement, it means they're the same line. And if they're the same line, it means that they intersect and everywhere. There are infinite solutions. This one's kind of weird, but I don't think that's going to pop up in the real world anytime soon. But anyways, all right, you guys try this one. I've packaged it nicely for you. Um, pause the video right now.
If you can't get it, unpause. I'm going to give you a hint in just a second. Then pause the video again uh, and try it on your own. So pause. Okay, you're unpaused. Um, here's your hint. Your hint is we're not solving for y here. You can solve for y, but it's already ready for us to, to substitute in for x. So what you can do is you can take this uh, y plus 50 and plug in for y here. So go ahead and give that a shot and uh, unpause the video when you're ready to check your answer. All right, game time, folks. So we're going to take, since x is already isolated, we're going to, oh, shoot, I explained that wrong. Oh, my gosh, it's going to go in for right here. Sorry, for x, we're plugging it in for x, not for y. Oh, no, people are really confused, probably. Sorry about that. Um, used to substituting for y. So we're going to plug it in for x, which is, um, so we're going to write 3, and then instead of writing x, I'm going to write y plus 50 plus 2y, we'll keep that the same, equals 200. Uh, distributing here, 3 times y is 3y, 3 times 50 is plus 150, plus 2y equals 200. So just distributed, recopied those, combining like terms, that's 5y plus 150 um, equals 200 minus 150 from each side and you'll get 5y equals 50 so y equals 10 and the easiest equation to substitute in there is definitely the bottom one y equals 10 x equals y excuse me x equals 10 plus 50 so x equals 60. So where do these two lines cross? They cross at the point 60 comma 10. All right, hope this video was helpful. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, remember, substitution gives you exact answers, so that's great. You're, if you're doing your assignment in MyOpenMath, 4-2. We'll see you next time.